Next year, I may have income above the threshold for a Roth IRA. We're on a Roth IRA kick today. We are. I love talking about Roth IRAs. It's our favorite thing to do because they're such versatile and flexible retirement vehicles. Are there disadvantages to making backdoor Roth contributions if my income ends up low enough that I could have contributed directly? Bobby, thanks for your question. Good that you know about the backdoor Roth. For the rest of the audience, we're going to talk a little bit about that and then get to your question. But a backdoor Roth, so there are income limits, uh, employment income limits that preclude higher earners from directly contributing to a Roth IRA. Now, in 2023, those are $153,000 if you're a single tax filer, $228,000 annual income if you're married filing jointly. And that's uh, the modified adjusted gross income number. Those are going up in 2024 to $240,000 for a married couple and $161,000 for a single. So uh, obviously, Bobby, if he's written this question to us, knows he's going to be on the verge of potentially making too much to be able to contribute to a Roth. But John, where the backdoor Roth IRA comes in as an option, and it really is restrictive on who really should take uh, advantage of this. But if you have no other IRA dollars, if all of your other money is in the 401k, if your pre-tax investments are in the 401k, not in an IRA, you can actually contribute to a traditional IRA and then convert those dollars to a Roth IRA. Yeah, let me say very clearly that there are no contribution limits in terms of income to a traditional IRA. Uh, you know, the most well, Warren Buffett can contribute to a traditional IRA. He just can't deduct it. Yeah. And then he, uh, the backdoor feature here is that you immediately, after that contribution, convert those dollars to a Roth IRA. I would do it while it's still sitting in cash before it's ever invested because you don't want to generate any gain in that in the traditional IRA sense because then you create taxable income on the conversion. So let's say that you put $7,000 into a traditional IRA today and immediately convert that to a Roth. That is a backdoor Roth contribution. As Scott has alluded to, The thing you don't want to do is have other IRA assets because it gets into this really convoluted mess that the IRS created when they wrote the rules that basically says if you have other IRAs out there, you can't just convert this one. You have to do a pro rata contribution, and then you get into actually uh, converting taxable income and having to pay taxes in the year that it's converted. So Mm -hmm. it's a very specific area where you can execute on a backdoor Roth IRA. We don't often suggest it to people because of the complexity is in, in place, mm-hmm. but you can get there from here if you're needing to make that Roth contribution. And it is also important to point out, John, that if his income ends up low enough that he could have contributed directly Uh, There's not any disadvantage to having done it on the backdoor side. That is correct. Uh, There is a disadvantage if you are make too much income, then you have to back that out and pay taxes on any gain that you've had on it. Uh, So that's another mess that you don't want to get into. So you want to be very exact, very careful in this process. I think it is very important, Scott, that you consult a tax professional to look at the all the considerations and be sure that you know what you're stepping in if you want to. uh, call it that uh, as you get in down this road but it is something that I think is worth some consideration now let's talk about the fact that that what you could do otherwise let's talk about you know if you've got money and you can't get it into the Roth IRA for whatever reason there are other alternatives you could go into an annuity program that is tax deferred Uh, all annuity contracts grow on a tax deferred basis and that might fit into the equation if this is truly retirement dollars that you want to use at age 59 and a half, or you could just invest it into a non-qualified account, pay the taxes on the dividends and capital gains, actually find some tax efficient investments, ETFs and things of that nature that you could put into that non-qualified account. And then you have no restrictions on it. You're just having to deal with the tax issues 
as they come up. I love a non-qualified account. I think you should max out those retirement accounts for sure. But, man, if you're if you're thinking about retiring early, you take the 59 and a half problem away uh, by having some non-qualified investments. You do have to pay taxes as you go. But, John, there's there are many ways that you can do that in an efficient way. Uh, you think about municipal bonds. You think about some real estate investment trusts that uh, are, are tax favorable on the distribution side. Yep. So you can do that in a favorable way and take some income from it along the way or continue to reinvest those dividends uh, and grow those uh, investments over time. Scott, let me mention that any of the investments that we make reference to, you you don't want to just go, oh, they said that on the show. Let me go do that. Uh, This is a process that you need to sit down with your financial advisor and carefully evaluate the merits of any investment that you go into. We don't recommend investments on this show. We just talk about alternatives because the reason we don't recommend investments on this show is we don't know anything about your situation and the preeminent thought process throughout any of this is we have to evaluate what is in your best interest and that is a very specific thing so generalized comments like this you have to really be sure that you dig down into your specific situation before making a recommendation actually live in your portfolio